Social Media and Education. In this video, you'll learn social media facts and about social media and education uses. Hey there. Now that we have learned about what a professional learning network is, and I talked about using social media to build your PLN, I'm going to use that into a segue into the next assignment, which is regarding social media and education. So this video will be a very short lecture about using social media for educational purposes. So social media platforms are used by 3.8 billion people so far this year in 2020. That is 49% of the population. That means almost half of the world world's population is uh, accessing social media platforms. There are some that are country specific, but the ones I'm going to look at today are um, international platforms that most people can access and they are all free in some form or another. So some of the uh, most popular platforms in the United States are Facebook. It's got 2.5 billion monthly users. YouTube, which I absolutely love, one of my favorite things ever, 2 billion monthly users. Instagram, 1 billion monthly users. Reddit, 430 million monthly users. And Snapchat, 382 million. Twitter, 340. And wrapping up with Pinterest at 322. So that is a huge population that is being um, contacted and informed through these platforms. So if social media is already out there and it's obviously free, then why shouldn't we use it for edu educational purposes? Here are some reasons to use social media for your educational purposes. We are already familiar with social media platforms. That means as a population, we can take that knowledge we already have of a platform and we can transfer it to uh, educational purposes. It makes it a lot easier for students if they have the background knowledge and they're building upon it, which you can do when you're using social media in education. It also, as an educator, helps you obviously to create your professional learning network. We've already talked about that, but it allows you to connect with other educators and also content experts across the world. Um, there are a lot of writers out there who are happy to do video chats with classrooms. There are so many ways you can bring the content to life and the people involved in it through social media. It also allow, allows for collaborative learning experiences for both educators and students. So as educators, we can work with other educators to learn together and we can also connect our students with students all across the world in a same learning experience. That's a really neat thing that helps students to um, truly understand the content if you try uh, tie it to a unique experience like that. We can also share our students' work. Obviously, you would want to de-identify it. Don't ever use student names because of FERPA and privacy. But we can share our students' work with a wider audience to elicit feedback. So um, I've seen a lot of educators on Twitter who make blogs, class blogs, and they get permission from the teachers to include the student's first name. Um, but the students will post to the class blog and then the educator will share it on their educational Twitter chats and get feedback from experts and educators all over the world. It's super neat to see. And every time I see an educator post something on there from their class and ask for feedback, I always try to look at it because um, it's a neat experience for students to hear from maybe somebody in a completely different country and tell them, hey, this is a great idea. Here's some other ideas that you might want to follow along with to learn more. It's also an incredibly effective way to collect and share resources. In this class, I use YouTube, which is considered a social media platform because so many people are using it to communicate ideas. I use YouTube and I make playlists and I post videos through there. Um, I also put different resources on Twitter that I find really interesting. So social media platforms can be used in all those ways for education. And it's really important to remember that 
you've got to use the technology in a meaningful way. So do not put social media elements in your classroom if they don't contribute to learning and to your students achieving their learning outcomes. Don't use extra te technology just to use it. Make sure you're using it in a really meaningful and effective way. And it's um, also an awesome way to get your students to tune in. So as always, let me know what questions you have.